Hey all, Sarim here. I got inspired to make a video on the optimal rubber and plastic production while working on my oil factory. If you search for this in the satisfactory wiki, you do get a chart for the rubber plastic loop, but at least I had some troubles trying to understand it, especially where the numbers come from. Hopefully this video will help with that. I will show both the mathematical explanation and, if you want more hands-on tips, a sample layout for both the rubber and the plastic setups. So, what is the rubber plastic loop then? It's basically a way to use alternate recipes to make three rubbers or plastics per used crude oil. With standard recipes you get two rubbers or plastics from three crude oil, so the loop is significantly more efficient, with the downside of being also significantly harder to set up. You need four different alternate recipes for this loop. Heavy oil residue that turns crude oil to heavy oil residue and polymer resin, Diluted fuel that, combined with water, turns the heavy oil residue to fuel, and recycled plastic and rubber is turned plastic to rubber and rubber to plastic, using fuel. The last two recipes form the loop. You can feed output from one to the other, and the items keep multiplying. Obviously this can't continue forever, as it needs fuel as well. As this setup needs many alternate recipes, you most likely can't build it for your first rubber and plastic factory. Don't worry. The basic recipes are good enough for quite a while. In my opinion, you will need to think about efficiency only when you start needing thousands of the materials per minute. Let's take a look at the rubber production using this loop then. I'm starting with that because it's slightly easier to explain than the plastic one. Let's assume we have some amount of crude oil which I notate with C. That is all sent to the heavy oil residue refineries which return 4 thirds C heavy oil residue and two-thirds C polymer resin. The polymer resin is sent together with equal amounts of water to refineries that produce one-third C rubber with the residual rubber recipe. The heavy oil residue is sent to blenders together with twice as much water. This produces eight-third C fuel with a diluted fuel recipe. The big question is, how should this be distributed between recycled plastic and recycled rubber? The way the recycled rubber and plastic recipes work is that you turn one of them to two of the other. So if we produce two units of rubber, we need one unit of plastic. This means that one third of the fuel should go to plastic and two thirds to rubber. So 8 over 9 C fuel goes to recycled plastic, producing 16 over 9 C plastic. And 16 over 9 C fuel goes to recycled rubber, producing 32 over 9 C rubber. Of that rubber, 8 over 9 C is needed at the recycled plastic, so it's sent back there. The remaining 8 thirds C is left over. This combined with the 1 third C from residual rubber gives a total yield of 3 C, meaning we get 3 rubber for each crude oil entered into the system. Feel free to pause the video here if you need a minute to think through the numbers. Next up is the plastic setup. Up until deciding how the fuel is split, it is exactly the same as the rubber one. Here the tricky part is that we are going to use one third C rubber from the residual rubber as input for recycled plastic. This means that we need to produce a bit less rubber with the fuel. The way we can solve this problem is to consider that we are sending one third C plus some variable X of rubber to the recycled plastic. The X comes from the recycled rubber, which must thus receive half X of plastic. Both recipes consume corresponding amounts of fuel, so the total fuel consumption is one third C plus X plus half X. But we also know that this equals to eight thirds C. Thus we get an equation we can solve. X becomes 14 over 9 C. Thus we send half of 14 over 9 C fuel, which is 7 over 9 C, to recycled rubber, and one third C plus 14 over 9 C fuel, which is 17 over 9 C, to recycled plastic. Recycled rubber produces 14 over 9 C rubber, which, together with the 1 third C from residual rubber, is exactly what the recycled plastic requires for 34 over 9 C plastic. 7 over 9 C is sent back to the recycled rubber, and 27 over 9 C, or 3 C, is left over. This means that also this setup produces 3 plastic for each crude oil sent to it. Again, feel free to pause here. This is not really trivial, at least for me it took some time to understand. If we compare these graphs with those on the satisfactory wiki, we can see that they are indeed the same. The graphs on the wiki are calculated with a production target of 60 per minute, which means that they start with 20 crude oil. 
this and the fractions of 9 in the formulas cause the steps in the middle to show quite nasty numbers in the decimal format. Hopefully the formulas in the fraction format in this video are a bit more easy to understand. Alright, let's see what a rubber setup look, looks like using this loop then. I have set a simple sample layout with uh, one oil extractor that's underclocked so that price 90 crude oil per minute. And the reason for that is because a lot of the numbers in this uh, setup are fractions of 9, so that, that, that gives us nice round numbers. The clock speed is at, set at 75%, so we get 90 uh, per minute. Obviously you don't need to do it this when you do it yourself. That uh, crude oil is then sent to uh, three refineries that produce heavy oil residue and polymer resin. The polymer resin itself is set, sent with this um, conveyor belt to another refinery that produces residual rubber and also takes some water. In total I need water from two water extractors. I have overclocked one of them. Obviously you could just build three and underclock maybe one of them if you want to, but I just wanted to keep this as, as sort of simple looking as possible. So this provides us the, the water we need total for this whole setup. So some of the water goes to uh, residual rubber and the rest of it goes to diluted fuel which also takes the heavy oil residue from our previous step and produces fuel. This is also on, uh, overclocked quite significantly at 240%. And then that fuel is sent to the axle loop of uh, recycled rubber and recycled plastic. So, and this is the only part actually that reverses between the rubber and the plastic setup, so you can set up everything else as, as uh, before, but uh, change these numbers if you want to actually produce plastic. Now we are producing rubber. So uh, we need two refineries for recycled plastic, which are down here, um, and then five refineries for uh, recycled rubber. I have overclocked a bit again to get uh, the numbers I want with only two refineries for the recycled plastic and only five for uh, the uh, recycled rubber so you can see the numbers here and this should now be a 100% efficient way of turning those 90 crude oil to 270 rubber per minute so let's see what happens when we actually put power to this network So this should start making first some uh, heavy oil residue and polymer resin in the first machines. This is sent to these machines, obviously we need to wait for the water to arrive first. So here we get some rubber. I realize I don't have a exit belt for this, but I can just put it, for example, there. So now we are starting to get some rubber produced that should be sent to these machines here. We also will need some fuel, so that we'll need to wait for some water first to arrive. So yeah, this setup or this uh, loop will take some time to actually start. We can maybe make it a bit faster by actually manually feeding this with rubber, for instance. Because it costs us to do that. So we don't need to wait for the residual rubber to actually produce the rubber for us. So this is now producing fuel that is sent via these pipes to different machines. And now we are actually producing plastic here, in now recycled plastic. So this should now start the loop, we should start getting plastic out of these machines sent down the line with the recycled rubber, which is then producing rubber. Part of that is sent back to those machines for recycled plastic and the overflow is sent to this container here. Alright, we have waited a while here. It seems that the fuel is now almost fully saturated to all of the machines. There's still some plastic missing, so I think I'll just uh, speed this up and uh, add some plastic manually there. 
like this. I think now this machine should be able to fully uh, work at 100% efficiency and of course we would have reached this by just waiting because these machines are producing enough plastic it just takes a while to get it through the manifold. So that is the setup for producing plastic, I mean rubber. Let's take a look at the uh, other side of this coin then and how the uh, plastic setup will look like. I've changed a bit the ratios here um, for the overclocking. Previously we had 133% uh, for this machine. And now that we switch with to recycled plastic we need to make a bit more plastic here. And we can uh, make a bit less rubber because we are actually getting some rubber from the residual rubber recipe. That's pretty much the only difference apart from obviously that we have swapped from uh, plastic to rubber and rubber to plastic. And then we have directed the residual rubber to uh, the input of these recycled plastic uh, refineries. So let's hook power to this system and see how it goes. Again this will probably take a bit of time to uh, actually start doing stuff. We can make it faster by filling manually these inputs. I think now we actually already, since we manually filled it and we had some uh, fuel from the previous setup already in the pipes, so that, that was filling up fast. I think we have already reached 100% efficiency for this setup as well. And we are getting some plastic to our container. So yeah, it's quite a complicated setup, but um, at least on this sort of small scale it's still manageable. When you start making thousands of the uh, items then it becomes a bit more complicated but uh, it's definitely worth it if you need to produce a lot of the stuff. And that's it for this video. I hope you found this useful and have learned something new from it. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you feel like it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.